Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today it's the Christmas Eve, day 24 of Advent of Code. We are bright and early when it releases, so let's just re jump right into it. Arithmetic Logic Unit Magri um, Magic smoke starts leaking from the submarine Arithmetic Logic Unit ALU uh, Without the ability to perform basic arithmetic and logic functions The submarine can't produce cold pat cool patterns with its Christmas lights It also can't navigate or run the oxygen system Don't worry Though you are probably have uh, enough oxygen left for to give you enough time to build a new ALU. The ALU is a four-dimensional processing unit. It has integer values, uh, W, X, Y, Z, and these uh, variables all start with the value zero. The ALU also supports six instructions, imp, uh, read an input value and write it to variable a, uh, add A and B, add a value to A, um, to the value B of B, store the result in value A, mul A, B, multiply the value of A and B, and then store the result in A, divide, the same goes for that, division, uh, truncate the result to an integer, the score of the result in value add. But here truncate means round the value towards zero. So round it down. Uh, divide and uh, mod, divide a value by the value of B and then store the remainder in variable A. This is called modulo operation. Equal, uh, if a value of A and B are equal, then store the value A, uh, well, value one in variable A. Otherwise, store the value 0 in value A. In all of these instructions, A and B are uh, placeholders. A will always be the variable where the result of the operation is stored. One of uh, W, X, uh, Y and Z. While B can be uh, either A variable or an, uh, a number. Numbers can be, uh, can be positive or negative but will always be integers. The ALU has no jump instructions. Um, in an ALU program, every instruction is run exactly once in order from top to bottom. The program holds after the last instruction and finish executing. Program authors should uh, be especially cautious attempting to execute div with uh, B0 or attempting to execute mod with uh, a less than zero or B um, less or equal will cause the program to crash and maybe even damage the ALU. These operations are never intended in any serious ALU program. For example, here is an ALU program which takes an input number, negates it and stores um, in X. Here is an ALU program which takes two input uh, numbers and then sets z to 1 if the second input number is 3 um, larger than the first number or sets z uh, to 0 otherwise. Yeah. Here is an ALU program which takes a non-negative integer as input, uh, converts it into a binary and stores the lowest uh, one's uh, bit in z. Uh, two um, two bits in Y and the lowest four bits in X and the fourth lowest eight bit in W. Once you have built a replacement ALU, you can install it in the submarine, which immediately resumes what it was doing when the ALU failed, validating the submarine's model number. To do this, the ALU will run the model uh, number arithmetic detection program, the MONAD, <laughs> your puzzle input. Uh, submarine model numbers are always four digit numbers consisting only of digits one to nine. The uh, zero digit cannot appear in the model number. 
When the modal uh, monad checks the hypothetical four digit number, it uses a f uh, 14 separate input instructions, each expecting a single dig digit of the model number in order to most, uh, from most to uh, least significant. So to check the model number that you should give it one, the fir uh, first imp instruction, three to the second input instruction, five to the third input instruction, and so on. This means that the operating system monad, uh, each input instruction should um, only given the, uh, ever be, be given an integer value of one and at most nine. When uh, then after monad finishes, run all the instructions. Uh, it will indicate the model number as valid by leaving a zero in the variable z. However, if the model number was invalid, it will leave other uh, non-zero value in z. Okay, Monad uh, exposes additional mysterious restrictions to model numbers and legend says that the last copy of the monad document was eaten by a, a tanuki you need to figure out the, uh, what monad does uh, some other way to enable as many submarine features as possible find the largest valid four digit uh, model number that contains no uh, zero digits what is the largest number accepted by uh, monad uh, to check the model number you should give uh, would give one to the first input instruction three to the second input instruction five to the third input instructions and so on this means that when operating monad each input instruction should only be given an integer value of at least one and at most nine when the monad has finished running all its instructions, it will indicate the model number as valid by leaving a zero in variable z. Or however, if the model number is invalid, it leaves a, a non-zero value in z. 14 numbers consisting only of... Ah, okay, not four. 14 digit number. And uh, we should give each input instruction different numbers. And we need to figure out which one is the value, uh, valid one. Ah, that explains things. Um, yeah, so let's save the input puzzle here. And I will do some calculations and see if I can figure out the result of this one. Uh, so I'll be right back. And we are back from the Christmas festivities and... I have been thinking about this a lot during my Christmas festivities. That's how my brain works, of course. So I have not forgotten about finding the largest number. And I actually found a really large number here that results in zero. So let's see if that is the right one. Let's put it in. Yes, you get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. So let's see what part two entails. As the submarine starts booting up, uh, things look like retro emulator. You realize that you maybe don't need all these submarine features after all. What's the smallest model number accepted by Monad? Yeah, so now I need to do the reverse, of course. And I actually figured out a pretty nice model here, which is, I went through all of this code that we have here and what we can see is that we have a bunch of iterations and then we have something that we will multiply with 26 and then we have modulus and div with 26 multiple times during the whole process here and then we are adding values and retracting values in both directions, but not in a straight line. So, for instance, uh, V1, the first input, and V14 is connected. They don't have any differences. But if we go to V2, for instance, we add uh, the value 4 here on V2, 
and then down on V13, which is the one that is connected to this one, we subtract 11 from the value that we want to check with. And everything, all these checks needs to be equal or else we will add a lot to it and we will not get zero anymore. So in this case, we retract 11. So uh, plus four minus 11, which leads us to minus seven. So I've gone through and created a list here with all the functions that keeps track on uh, what numbers are valid. So in this case, we should be able to, uh, and you see here that I also kept track on what, uh, what the different uh, things were called. So now we know, we know exactly what we need to do. We can say that v1 is one, so that will be a lot less. Then v2 should be connected to 13, but it needs to be seven more. So we know that this is two, so this needs to be at least eight, because it's seven more. Uh, and then we have v3, which uh, five extra to then the tu12, so we can do one and then remove three from this, so six. And then we have v4, which is from v4, we add seven. Uh, so here I can go to one and then on v7, I can only go to eight. And then we have v6 and v5 is connected. So here I can go all the way down to three and one because v6 is two larger than v5. Uh, and then we have eight, which is here v8 and v9 is connected. So v8, uh, nine needs to be four more than eight. So we can go to one and five here. And then we only have 10 and 11 left. So 10 uh, should be six more than 11. So 11 could go to, down to one and this could go to seven. So this should be a valid value as well. If we run that against our computer, we get zero. So now we only need to type this one out here. And uh, so let's see if we can do that. One, eight, one, one, three. 1, 8, 1, 5, 7, 1, 6, 1, 1. So let's take that value and see if that's the right one. And we go back here, put it in and submit. Yes, you get a gold star, I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. So that was day 24. So what did I do here? Well, we have first off the input which is uh, up here, we do an input, and then I list it as a program, I read it in to a program, all the lines into this list of program, uh, and then I create this ALU computer, which takes a program, and I also have an instance so I can know how long I've been running it, and then I will compile this, because before I thought that I needed to run a lot of them. So I wanted to make so efficient that I, it's not even funny. Uh, and I have run a lot of them. Uh, so how did the ALU computer actually fare here? So what I had in here was this variable, uh, which I could create by either a string, a value, or a Bing integer. So I kept something which was a value in here. Then I had an operator where I created final uh, ints for each operator and I even added a couple of my own here. Totally unnecessary. And then I uh, created a type so I can know which one of these it was. And this kept two variables. So I could have objects that changed, uh, changed in a series. So I only need to compute things and just run all the operations and the values would change in their positions. I didn't move anything around, didn't have anything else going on here. So the operator took two values and a type. Uh, I have this program list that came in, that I put in here, and then a, uh, a program which was a bunch of operators, and the input string uh, inputs that I wanted to run, 
and then where, where in the input I was, so zero was the first input that I took, and a variable list. And the variable list had these four variables here, all set to zero, and then I had this uh, program list where I compiled each line, and I could also print the variables. And this compile line used this numeric up here, but it, the only thing I did here was pretty much say that I wanted to add an operation in this, an input, and then I said that the uh, input variable I wanted to use was positioned here and should be the variable in the variable list with this name, often w, or all the time w here, but I at least read the inputs. And then here, I, when I did an add operation, I could go through and check the uh, add operation against this uh, variable array here. So uh, the first input was a variable array and the new other one was just a variable. So here I created a variable that only had this value, which could be for instance five or something like that. So that was a variable that just held the value. And then I had this variable list here and I picked a specific variable if it wasn't numeric. Then I did the same for multiple and division, modulus, equal, not equal, and set operations. And then I, uh, when I wanted to compute something, I started at all values being zero, the index being zero, and I added this input, and then I started to compute my program. And when I was done, I returned the value of Z. And computing a line is just checking, is this the operator? If so, then the variable A on this operator will have the input here as a big int. If it's add, the only thing I do is take uh, var variable A, add variable B to this and store in var variable A. Multiplication, same thing here, divide and reminder could actually be just divide here. I realized a little bit later, so I don't need to have that complexity. Modulus is also built in. The equal was just checking this and then return big int uh, one or big int zero. And then we have the non-equal, which is the reverse. And then I had a set operation, so I could take variable b and just set it to a variable. And it worked. It was a lot more complexity than I actually needed because I could figure this out by just checking all the structure and realizing what's going on by the, uh, in the compute um, operations here. So uh, that was pretty much what I did. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you uh, have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.